Hey guys, Desolator Magic here, and should Wizards of the Coast change all cards on MTGO and Arena to NFTs so that we can trade them and prove that we own them and we retain ownership instead of them? Sounds great, right? Well, a lot of people talking about it on forums and stuff and on subreddits have no idea what they're talking about. I've been in the crypto world since 2011 in case you missed the last video. Or the first video that I made on crypto, if I would have held on my crypto from 2012, I would have had 110 million. So, um, oops, sold it a little early. My bad. Oh, well, I, I'm, I'm super over it. I assure you. But with that little oopsie doopsie out of the way, NFTs, uh, what are they? How do they work? How do they apply to, to magic? Uh, what everybody's talking about right now is like mobile games and you, you could like own your skins in CSGO, trade them third party outside of the control of the, the company running the game. And I mean, playing RuneScape, would I have loved to, you know, actually own the items that I, you know, double quote own, but according to the terms of service don't, yeah, I'd love it. So they sound great, but would it work? And the answer is, oh my God, not even close. No, unequivocally no. Anybody saying yes doesn't know what they're talking about. And by the end of this video, you're gonna find out why. Now I didn't look into like the, the code behind it and all that, but I, I get what they're doing here. What an NFT is supposed to be is like an absolutely indisputable public deed that says you own this property. What it really is, is a string of text put inside of a blockchain. Literally technology we had in 2011. So when it first came out, people were like, ooh, this is the future of the copyright system. The problem is anybody can create an NFT and claim they own anything. Well, that kind of fell through then, didn't it? So now it's just devolved into, you know, stupid scammers and absolute scumbag social media douches like Instagram models and other assorted losers, almost exclusively living in LA, plugging this crap as a front for money laundering while also scamming their uh, underage fans. So, bit of a departure from what it was intended to to what it turned out to be. So we've got people saying, this is the future, NFTs are here to stay, and 10 years from now, NFTs are gonna be the norm for you know proving you own anything. The deed to your house will be an NFT. Those are pipe-dreaming lunatics, but then we've also got the, uh, isn't it just pictures of monkey, ha ha ha, right-click, save as, ha ha, screenshot, I'm a criminal, NFTs are stupid. I mean, there are people who didn't take two seconds looking at this and literally think NFTs are just pictures of monkeys. Which scammers and money launderers and people who own offshore casinos, in case you haven't followed all the drama, um, have been selling to each other for millions of dollars to scam people into buying in so that they can net more and then, you know, bail, jump off the ship, be, be not the last one uh, holding the hot potato there. This crap has been going on since the 80s with sports cards, it's been going on with collectibles, it's been going on with like SNES cartridges, it's all fake, it's all tied to the same people. It's a criminal group, NFTs are not worth millions of dollars, and if you pay even above one dollar for one as a joke, then then you're part of the scam. And I don't mean you're on the perpetration side, you're on the victim side. So those two extremes are, are completely wrong. Well, let's go back to what I said. It's a string of text that basically the intention is to prove you own something in a database or on a website somewhere. So let's just cut all the crap, cut all the past examples and cut the drama and, and move on from there. So that's what NFTs are. Ignore all the monkeys and all the, oh, it's the future. Uh, the big thing with NFTs is that you can never like forge two tokens because it's non-fungible token that are identical. So nobody's going to say, oh, I own this. No, there's a dispute because I own this. Let's say it's uh, 256 letters and numbers of gibberish because it probably is. Like I said, I didn't look in the technical spec because who cares? So whoever's running that database as a service, it could be Microsoft, could be a game, could be a website. They say whoever has the token matching this gibberish, they're the owner. Indisputable, can't clone it, can't steal it, can't, you know, forge an identical value. So there's value there. I mean, it's kind of like if I say I'm sending you and then just insert the name of almost any crypto ever made, nobody can stop me and it's going to get there. There's no chargebacks. There's no fraud. There's no, the World Bank said no, or, oh, my carrier said there's a $70 fee to do that. Or, oh, that's a banned country or group. Or, oh, that person doesn't have an ID. You ever tried to like buy something on Steam if you're like 13 and don't have a credit card? That's why crypto took off because I just install some stuff and there you go. Nobody's stopping me. Nobody runs it. It runs itself. There is intrinsic value to an, a financial network with like a 10 plus year history that runs itself. That can't be stopped by anyone. And that's why there's intrinsic value to NFTs because it is an absolute ledger or deed that says this is the owner, period. 
So the big trend at like the end of 2021 was uh, stupid, you know, giant gaming companies that constantly do anti-consumer stuff because they're run by morons, Wall Street finance morons, instead of game creating engineers and programmers. So these business guy suit losers are like, ooh, buzzword, ooh, thing. And then they do a poll from some, you know, idiot 21 year old fresh out of college, if even that dumb Zoomer who works in marketing. And they're like, yeah, yeah, it would be a really good idea if we had microtransactions in our mobile or PC game or console, I guess. But we told people you retained ownership of what you bought because then they won't feel like they bought nothing because our terms of service say they don't retain or own anything. We can ban their account and delete their items at any time. So let's just you know, go to like RuneScape, EverQuest, WoW, whatever. You got a rare item? Well, somebody else right next to you has the exact same item, same stats, same everything. Right off the bat, doesn't make sense for NFTs because the whole point is that there isn't an identical one. Now, let's say I make a thousand laptops and they all have different serial numbers, but they're all identical. That's the point. It's for tracking them. There's still only a thousand. But the second problem is it's supposed to be unique intrinsic value. So a work of art. Very hard to replicate unless it's digital, obviously, then it's you know, trivially easy. But if I painted a painting and I wanted to assign an NFT to it, you're not going to make an identical painting. So the whole non-fungible part, which just basically means it's unique and can't be replicated. Well, there you go. But blockchain stuff and NFTs work better with digital stuff, which is intrinsically replicatable. So the whole uniqueness thing goes out the window anyway. So if you want to make a thousand ultra rare swords in World of Warcraft, that's fine. You know, just serialize them, put them in a row in the database. And that's why when people say NFTs, they're supposed to be unique. Yeah, they're supposed to be, but it doesn't work. So let's just get over that and move on. The real problem with like MMOs and item drops and, you know, all this stuff is really twofold. And this is, you know, some of what I'm saying is going to apply to the eventual uh, point of this video, which is MTG Arena or MTGO, retaining ownership of your cards. Provably outside the grasp of Wizards of the Coast, which if that doesn't, you know, grab your interest, I don't know what will, because I would love that. I mean, you ever play an MMO for like five years though and think, wow, if I did or said the wrong thing or some activist moderator or some idiot, you know, content moderator or just a mistake or AI, if they make a mistake, boom, my account's deleted and all the items on it, five years worth of work, gone. Unacceptable. Can you sue them? Can you sue them for damages? The loss? Your time? No, because the terms of use say you don't own anything. You don't even own your own account. That's why when you go on eBay and try and sell your uh, RuneScape account, they don't let you, which is funny because you absolutely can sell your login credentials. You can't sell the account, but you can sell the login. And yet eBay coordinates with them anyway and takes down the auctions anyway. Such absolute collusion. I think that's a lot of crap. That's why, hey, what if I own all the items? So it sounds nice. Here's like the, the mountain of problems with that. One, who cares about the value of something if they could just run off more? If it has a real world value, you think they're not going to run off a thousand more swords than a thousand, than a thousand, than a thousand? Because people would be like, whoa, look at the secondary market price for something that came out two years ago in the game. It's going up. And they'll be like, it's going up. Wait, so it's instead of 10 cents, it's worth like $3 now. So if we did another event and brought the item back and ran off more copies of it, people would pay us maybe a dollar for the loot box. Okay, we'll cash in on that. So that's the problem with the whole uniqueness versus not uniqueness. They could just make more and give them more unique IDs, you know? Another problem. Okay, so you get Chinese bots and then they do a big ban wave. Like I know on SRO, which I played a million years ago, about one third of the players or <laughs> accounts, I guess you could say, were bots. Very, very low budget, poorly policed game. So when you do a, a ban and you, you know, ban 10,000, half a million, whatever bot accounts, well, you delete all their items basically. Oh, what if all the items are theirs? It doesn't matter. The accounts are gone, but the items are there. Well, that's a problem. What if somebody does a replication glitch, which with NFTs is, is like actually impossible. So that's actually kind of nice. But what if they, instead of duplicating their item and then they would have like two NFTs or two same IDs and it just, it wouldn't work. What if you got to the end boss chest and then you open it up and a brand new sword with that NFT behind it and that ID was made by the code, by the server, and then they transferred it to your account, but then you found a glitch to open it over and over and over and over and over and over and over because of network lag or some, who knows? So it would be a loot drop glitch, not an item replication glitch, but effectively the same thing. Oh, that's simple. Roll the server back. Well, you can't because the item ownerships are on the blockchain, except here's the thing. You can. That's why NFTs are, are almost intrinsically broken and pointless. You have to trust the person running them off and you have to trust the service that it refers to because all NFTs really are is a pointer. They're just like, hey, 
over in this server here somewhere, this gibberish means something. But if the service operator, the game maker says, uh, no, it doesn't. Yeah, you have an NFT for this, but that item belonged to a banned account, so now you don't own it. Well, then they could still invalidate your item and take it away at any point. So the whole, I retain ownership, it's nothing. So they're talking about, like, what, Call of Duty skins or guns or weapon mods or something being like, oh, we're going to transfer to you, so you own it. Well, what if you get banned for wall hacking and then, well, how do you transfer ownership if you can't log in? Simple. It's on a blockchain. It's separate, so you sell it to someone completely outside the service. Well, what if they marked on their server, hey, all the items that belong to this person on this date, do not allow them. So you sell the item to someone and they're like, yay, you transferred the NFT to me and it's on the blockchain and nobody could stop us. And then they log into the game and they say, oh, failed to load banned item. You got this item from a banned account. So we've effectively not taken it away. You still own it, but it's worthless because it represents nothing because we're not honoring it. Well, then we have a problem, don't we? Completely defeats the purpose. That's why I said it's marketing fluff. It's a lie. They're just trying to get people in to be like, Ooh, I retain ownership of a microtransaction? Wow. Look, people been selling skins for hundreds of dollars on third-party websites and via Steam and via bots and all that crap for like 10, 20 years. In CSGO and TF2, primarily. And that's all on Steam, and that, there's no NFTs there. It's the same thing. If they ban your account, you lose all the items on it. The only difference is they don't want to ban certain people and have all these reported losses or people would lose respect in it. So they tend to be real just, oh, let everyone do what they want free market because they make piles of money on it. They get a transaction fee, remember, and they make eBay look cheap by comparison. You sell like a $600 knife in CSGO, oh, Steam gets rich. They get more money than they get when you uh, installed the game. If I'm not mistaken, I've heard it's above 10%. Also, I don't think CSGO ever sold for 60 and also now they have a free version. So terrible example. But that system's been working, I hate to say flawlessly, but good enough and people respect it, even though they know darn well that one entity is in control and they can pull the rug at any time. You know why? Because it's been 10 plus years and they haven't. It's that simple. NFTs, nothing different except for a bunch of blockchain crap and, you know, you better not get your wallet stolen or your account hacked or there is no remedy. And that's the last problem. And that's where I want to bring this to the, the um, not PR nightmare necessarily, although you hear NFT and you just kind of thumbs down no matter what the announcement is. So there is that, but it would be a customer support nightmare for Wizards of the Coast. Let's say you open a pack and the pack had, you know, an NFT on it and then you open it and you get a bunch of cards. And each individual card has an NFT. So you own it. It's associated with a, your wallet address on the Ethereum network, which nobody should ever use, but I'll get into that at the end. It's the same problems. What if Wizard says, I'm not going to honor that card. That was from a hacked account. That was stolen. That was a cheater. And remember, they've banned like a grand total of, that I know of, like three people from MTGO. And they real quick and real kind of on the down though gave them a giant refund or gave them like a weak warning so they could sell off all their crap. And when they banned uh, Jeremy from MTG Headquarters, a.k.a. The Quartering, who is not my friend, we could not agree less on politics, morals, and literally everything else on the planet. Just FYI, people keep grouping me up with him randomly because people on Twitter don't do their damn research. But yeah, when they banned him, he wasn't able to sell off the stuff quick enough, so he just did a credit card chargeback. He's like, they literally did not deliver me what they promised to, and it went through. It's a little gray area, but yeah, makes sense. They took his money and gave him nothing. I mean... <laughs> There you go. So if they start, you know, giving people the message, hey, we can ban you at any time, mistakenly or otherwise, and you could lose everything. You know, people are like, my account's worth like a thousand to ten thousand dollars. Yeah, I'm gonna get out just for my own safety. And then you sell it to a third party bot, which they don't formally recognize or allow, but tolerate and don't do anything about. Awfully similar to Steam, I think I know who they copied. So imagine that like tomorrow, Wizards comes out and says, hey, happy 2022, everybody. Everything on Arena is going to be NFTs, and now you can trade cards with everybody. Oh my god, they brought trading to Arena, and instead of being run by them, it's run outside of them. Wizards can't touch my card collection, holy crap. Some people would be like, eh, NFT equals stupid. Aren't they just pictures of monkeys? And other people would be like, oh crap, it's a unique identifier deed that proves unequivocally outside of Arena that I own this card. Okay, so to say it would be mixed would be, a, you know, an understatement. Whenever anybody announces NFT anything, there's, uh, if it's even, like, vaguely, like, oh, this looks kind of good, so not dumb pictures and not stupid Los Angeles Instagram model scams and not something tweeted up by Soldier Boy and not something promoted by the Paul Brothers, you know, it's like a real service where it might benefit from it. Some people are like, NFT equal bad. 
That's all I've heard. I, I don't know what they are, how they work, or what they mean, but NFT equal bad. And then it's almost like 50-50 down the middle. You got the other people that are like, yes, embrace the tech. I want ownership, but I want more control and you to have less control. So I think it would be very mixed, but at the end of the day, if, if they roll it out and then you wait a year, people would be like, well, that was a disaster. Because like I said, they know who issued it. They have a log. It's public. You get a whole ownership trail. You could say, like, let's just look at the database of transactions. Oh, a year and a half ago, this was owned by someone who got banned. Okay, we're not going to honor that card. And you just log in and you bought a card on the secondary market, separate from Wizards, bought it with, you know, Ethereum or whatever. And you're like, this system is great. Right up until the point where you log in and they say the following cards have been deleted from your account because it was found that one of the past owners was fraudulent or that it was fraudulently gained, you know, by some kind of server hack or just because we don't like the person and their politics. They sent out a mean tweet about Biden, so we deleted their account, and anybody they ever sold to, we killed the card. So these 37 cards have been deleted. Hope you didn't pay much for it. Whether you show up with the deed in your hand or not doesn't mean that the service is going to say, yup, there's nothing we can do. We're going to honor that. No, they could just be like, no, nah, we made it worthless because we control the service. So you'd have to have the whole functional back end of, of like MTG Arena be also blockchain transactions. Like every time you open a pack, it's on the blockchain so that everything like down to acquiring the item would be out of their control. But I don't think that's even possible. Some people are saying you do a stack of like binary switch, smart contracts, this, that, and the other thing, you could probably build an entire game's backend logic and inventory management like on the blockchain. And in theory it would be there, but then what do you do when the game gets hacked? There's a replication glitch. There's an item duplication glitch. There's a loot drop glitch. There's Chinese farmers, you know, bot farmers where they're like, Ooh, this game's solid and they can't stop us. They can't seize our assets or banner accounts. Okay. And then the game is now, you know, 90% bots more of a problem with MMOs, but I guarantee somebody could write a bot to run a basic, uh, certain kind of deck on arena. Which would be detectable, it'd be a bit of an arms race, but if the second that they get a pack or a reward or a coin or whatever, open it and then, you know, transfer the card, the resulting cards to someone else, like within a second, it wouldn't matter if you ban them, the damage has already been done and they'll just register a new account. You would never solve the botting problem, never. So it's either out of their control and the NFT system is, is amazing and flawless and the code is great and you don't really have to trust the platform other than them not turning off the servers and killing the entire game, which is another issue. Well, then they can't stop fraud. They can't stop hackers. They can't stop bots. They can't stop item dupers, database hacks, anything. They can't stop anything because they're not in control of the blockchain. That's the point. That's how blockchains work. They're decentralized. Or it's just you show up with the ID and then if they feel like it, they'll be like, yeah, you own that card. Or they say, no, you don't. We're not going to honor it because that, that ID is marked as banned, deleted. So it's on the blockchain and it's irrefutable, but they don't care. Because then they could, you know, get rid of bot accounts and actually handle stuff and moderate stuff. Neither one of those work. That's why there is no solution to this. So no, I don't think NFTs have any place in Magic the Gathering at all. And this would be the closest you could get to rolling it out in like a functional manner, like something that would actually matter. Now, it doesn't mean that all blockchain tech is bad because you either control it or don't, and it's just going to kill anything and all smart contracts and all software that runs on the blockchain and everything. Because, I mean, I hate to say it, but I be careful with what I say here. I'm already risking the, the keyword density on this video of naughty, naughty words, according to YouTube. But, uh... Gaming and, and staking currency on the blockchain in uh, games of chance. You can run that whole backend system on the blockchain and it's perfect. It's all smart contracts. The smart contract is this. And then you use another part of the blockchain to like uh, use like a, a some kind of nonce fed equation thing in the next block. I, I, I've tried to understand it. It's been 10 years. I still don't. Actually, more like eight years. It wasn't that soon, but uh, I mean, basic, if you've ever seen online, you know, the C word where the results and the odds are, are fair and provable on the public blockchain. You can look up your transaction ID and say that coin flip was verifiably 49.5% odds because we based it on this and that's what the odds were. And then it happened. And then other servers outside of ours verified it. And it's all perfect. It's all there. You can look at it. That crap's been around, like I said, for like seven, eight years easy. So what if the casino goes under? Doesn't matter because you're not using some token, some fake item, some, oh, that, that number means something in our database. Just like, oh, it, it represents a JPEG of a monkey on our server. Well, what if your servers turn off? Then I have nothing. That's stupid. People are selling NFTs of URLs to tweets, which by the way, anybody could make. That's another problem. You don't have to prove you're the owner. That, that's an enormous problem. But what if Twitter deletes the tweets or changes their URL structure? 
uh oh, the link's broken and all your NFTs are worthless, you know, a couple years from now. So, like, in theory, if they're big enough and smart enough, they wouldn't, but you never know when a service is going to fail. But then again, you never know when, like, Venezuela's currency is going to fail. So, I'm not saying that everything outside of crypto is so much more stable, okay? But when you're just running the, the software that does all of the calculations, transactions, randomness, values, you know, database, basic database stuff on a blockchain, like an online gaming website well you're just the one operating and sending the commands it all runs on the blockchain it's fully decentralized so they would have to rewrite mtgo hmm wait a minute didn't someone just buy all of mtgo i could have sworn hmm anyway they'd have to rewrite it from the ground up to run like that which i i don't know if that's possible my guess would be no the whole point of the game is I own cards and they're in decks. If you think about something like what I was just referencing before that I can't name by name, the whole thing, it, it's just a game about sending money to people. You just gamified like me sending you $5. There's actually really no game there. It's just a glorified wallet thing where, where they happen to build a game on top of it, kind of. And as rudimentary as that was, you can't do much more than that with smart contracts. I mean, a little bit more and I don't, I only like 90% understand them. I don't fully understand them. But at the end of the day, they're just binary switches. They're just true false, where it's like, it's kind of like automatic escrow, where you post a smart contract and it says $100. And then when this thing flips from zero to one, then release the funds to the person. So they can view that you put it up. And then if they don't complete the contract, then they don't get the funds and you still retain ownership. But otherwise you, you can't just like not pay someone after the work's been done. So actually smart contracts are amazing, but it's still just glorified true false. If it's not even glorified, it just literally is true and false. So I don't know how you build a card game on true and false. Like I said, you'd have to do like layers of it and almost write the code in binary. And then here comes the number one problem. Every time you do something with a token or an NFT, kind of the same thing, that's on the, the Ethereum blockchain, bare minimum, it costs something called a gassing fee. I think just to create an NFT takes a gassing fee. What's a gassing fee? It's basically a transaction fee. Well, what's that? Like if I were to send you, you know, 50 Ethereum, which is, you know, what, 10 grand, 100,000, some huge amount of money, uh, the fee would be right around two bucks. But if we're living in cyberpunk world and I want to pull out my phone and send a vending machine $2 in Ethereum, it's going to cost me $2.21. Like, that's the average fee right now. Now it scales, it's different, it's not static, it's based on size, and it's, it's the whole thing. But if I'm not mistaken, last I checked, which was a while ago, if I wanted to send you any amount of Litecoins, it's going to cost about a penny. The Ethereum network is so clogged up and clunky and not scalable and overstressed, and the gassing fees are out of control ridiculous. I mean, back earlier this year, it was $71 to do any kind of transaction on average. That's ridiculous. It would literally be cheaper to just do it the traditional way between banks, even internationally. I think mine charges about 40 to do that. So yeah, the Ethereum network, it, it got too popular. It's just like Bitcoins where they had to do this big upgrade with the Lightning network and this level two crap, which barely mitigated anything. It's just overcomplicated. It's like restoring an old car. At the end of the day, it's it could only get so good and you're trying to strap new stuff onto something that's just too damn old. Now you look at like Solana, you look at like some of the other networks, which are you know blowing up right now. Solana's actually, I think top 25 in all currencies. That, that one's pretty good. Not in any way investment advice. But they were built to do like, I forgot how many millions of like smart contracts per second or something, but it, it's so far beyond Ethereum that I think everybody in the world could use it 10 times a day and it would be fine. It wouldn't even be even near capacity and the fees would be next to nothing. The transaction fees would be fractions of a penny. So if you want to make an NFT, do it there. Because otherwise, every time I send you a card, it's going to cost a gassing fee. Now, I don't know what a gassing fee is, you know, dollar wise compared to a transaction fee. I think they're a little bit different, but... Maybe they're identical. I don't know. That's another thing that I didn't bother to look up because I don't dick around with any Ethereum tokens. It's just stupid. In fact, the last one I messed with was the Shiba Inu token. And to send, I think like, oh, I forgot, 20 bucks worth to the Magic Historian on his live stream because why not? I think it cost me like $9 in gassing fees. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. And I think I didn't even pay in Ethereum. I paid in Shiba, which like, how does that work for NFTs? So maybe they, maybe they worked on it already rolled out because my knowledge is a little out of date on this, like some kind of fix for NFT transfer stuff. But the whole basis is, well, who's going to run the network? Who's going to volunteer to process transactions if they're not getting paid anything to do it? So there's always going to be a transaction fee, but then they always have these hard caps. And the cap on Ethereum is too damn high. 
Okay, I said it for the memes. Low, though. It's too low. Shout out to the rent is too damn high guy. I would have voted for him. As soon as the network is already too stuffed and there's like nobody using it, you don't build another token and another thing on top of it, okay? Ethereum is like on the verge of collapse just about. I'm not saying it'll start to like fail to make blocks like Chia. My God, was that rollout a botched disaster made by morons? But it's just gonna get so expensive that people are just like, I can't use this, which was kind of the design. They, they didn't want it to just be like, all of the processing nodes broke because of volume, let alone somebody flooding it with cheap transactions to like DDoS it on purpose. So it's built to get prohibitively expensive because you're like bidding for space, which is how Bitcoins also work. They made the same mistake as Bitcoins and they came out years afterwards. Come on guys. So you look at Solana, it, it's like, you know, or you make a billion transactions in a week or something. I'm like, yeah, okay, that sounds about good. So any company that's like, we're using the Ethereum blockchain for our NFT, no, you're not, and you're idiots. It just proves that you have no idea what you're talking about. Your engineers are liars. They're probably just contractors, and some dumb Zoomer, Zoomer millennial just got out of college and said, do NFTs. NFTs are cool. They're really modern. Everybody's going to be so impressed. It's the future. And some you know idiot 60-year-old you know clueless boomer CEO is like, yeah, NFTs, I heard of that. That's that block crypto thing. Yeah, let's do that. We'll be so future. So there are cheaper blockchains out there that are scalable and can suppress any transaction fee well below a penny, okay? It's doable. Which would mean a marketplace could sit there and operate, you know, without any kind of like, I don't have to mail you the card. I don't have to pay first class tracking, you know? They could run into 1% fee, take care of the fees for you, which would be lower than that. And then pff, there you go. 1% to trade anything. I'd pay 1%. Come on. So it all sounds like it would fall into place nicely, but you get into that conundrum of, well, does Wizards control it? And then nobody trusts it. And they could rug pull you at any time and delete your whole thing and you don't own anything. Or is it out of their control and they just cross their fingers and hope that their generation system of software is flawless? And the answer is neither. There is no solution and NFTs have absolutely no realistic practical use in any kind of trading card game at all. Now that said, my knowledge on this is a little spotty. You can probably tell from this video that I know more about blockchain tech and, and NFTs than most people, but I haven't sit there and studied it because... It's just not relevant. I've kind of been out of crypto a little bit for like a, a while. It's not like I don't own any. It didn't sell, I think, a, like half a million dollars worth of volume on and off this whole year, which ended with like 2K. I'm just saying I, I bought and sold it quite a few times. Trust me, you boys broke. Like and subscribe if you want me to be less broke. So I haven't read up on like the exact specs and you know what network does what and oh now they made this change in this patch because I'm not writing software for it and I don't care about it. I'm just ignoring NFTs. They're stupid. They do have a use but it's so full of holes and uh, everybody just goes straight to the Ethereum network for it that it's just give it five years and maybe I'll give a crap you know because people are just getting it so wrong. And now it's just being abused by scammers, people selling fake artificially valued stuff in auctions to scam people and microtransaction heavy garbage companies like EA and Activision, who all said that they might uh, consider rolling it out, and Ubisoft, who at this point is probably owned by one of the two. I, I don't even care. So there may be a solution here, a mathematical solution, a theoretical one, one that's in beta, one that's in testing, one that's a proof of concept in a code base somewhere on GitHub. I don't know. If there is, I sure as hell haven't heard about it, but I wouldn't be surprised if I haven't heard about it. But from what I know, NFTs wouldn't work in almost any game, in almost any anything. I, I can't actually name one working implementation of NFTs in any type of service, game or otherwise, web service, anything, that's like working flawlessly and up and running right now. You know why? Because NFTs don't work. You know how an NFT would work? Okay, I make a brand new uh, you know, non-fungible token system, and it represents like a laser-etched... QR code or serial number on the back of a granite tablet and I, I carve memes into it. It's a physical object and then on the very back a virtually indestructible serial number. And then whoever owns on the blockchain that NFT, they are legally recognized as the owner. Now, not by any current laws, but I mean, you write up and sign a little sales contract with it, that's good enough to stand up in court. Really, the NFT would just be the, oh, here's the ownership, like here's the fingerprint, here's the ID, here's the serial number. The transfer of ownership, the I sold it to him or he sold it to them or, you know, whatever, that's great. Nobody cares. The record of the sale, <laughs> the fact that it happened, the terms of use on like eBay or whatever, that would be what enforces the ownership. Unless the government themselves set up like a, a, a hyper secure, you know, NFT system, which 
laughable, but there is inherent security on the blockchain. So like, okay. And it would just be like the entire copyright system or the entire patent system or all real estate and property and, and like land lots in all of America. They all now have an ID and the person who owns it is the person with the, with the NFT. The other problem is NFTs can be stolen because they're digital. And that's the number one problem with any kind of practical use of crypto is it's literally easier to steal it than it is to steal cash because you don't even have to be present in person. Someone forgets their encryption password to their, to their wallet. Those funds are gone. Somebody makes it something stupid and reversible. Gone. How many people catch a virus every year on their computer? How many people get hit by ransomware? How many people think that they're smart and think that it's ultra super secure and they work for like the best company in the world and unlimited budget and it's like military and then it gets hacked because of a zero day because you're running some third party software like SolarWinds, for example, or Microsoft, for example. And because nobody knew about the vulnerability and you didn't write the code yourself because that's not practical, you get hacked, no fault of your own. No system can be secured past that. It's impossible. Well, they got in and they ran code. Boom, they stole your wallet. They stole your stuff. Now you encrypt it well enough, but then they could put in a key tracker and it's all this stuff. At the end of the day, I'm not going to get into computer security. Let's just say anytime somebody can run malicious code on your server or your mobile phone or your computer or just wherever the funds are, wherever the wallet is, they can steal your crypto. I, I can virtually guarantee you that. Not to mention all the people who would normally just be like, I forgot my password to my online bank. Call support. Well, there is no support. Because nobody runs it, it runs itself. You forget your password, you just lost your $1,000 in your wallet. I can't convince my own family members to back up their wedding photos. Or at least 10 years ago, I couldn't. Let alone make sure you'd have cold wallets and replication and printed out in a safe backups of your private key. Not only would people's eyes glaze over, they just say, what the hell do you mean? But uh, you can't count on people to actually do it. I mean, last time I backed up my computer was probably three months ago. Even I don't follow my own rules. You can't even count on people to not lose their car keys, let alone their private keys to their wallet. You ever see the drink station at a gas station? Oh, you know I'm circling back to this joke. It's, it's, it's gold at this point. Some humans at NASA put other humans on the moon and then return them. Other humans can't go to the gas station and put a liquid in a cup without spilling it. So how is the second group going to handle flawless, perfect IT security? And wallet management and backups. Their phone breaks, the battery dies, the, the, the flash memory goes out, a capacitor blows, they drop it in a lake. Uh-oh, I hope the wallet wasn't really hosted there. And you might think, oh, but well, look at Coinbase though. For example, they've been around forever. They've never been hacked. They've never lost all their because they manage all of it for me. Well, then it might as well just be a damn bank, okay? Like the whole point is one, nobody controls crypto. And two, it's all under your ownership and runs itself. It, you're in control. More like a 1B. So two, there are no backsies. There's there's no, oh, let me reverse that funds because it was fraudulent. Oh, somebody stole your password, stole your credit card number. Let me reverse that. Let me reset that for you. No, there is no that. You, you get no chances. Now, if they wanted to add fraud liability or it was legally required, or they just wanted to be, you know, Mr. Nice Guy, where if a certain amount of accounts were a glitch happened or they were compromised, they'll just be like, out of our pocket, we'll reimburse you. Yeah, that literally nice hash did that. They got hacked. They lost a ton of their crypto because those idiots wouldn't keep them in cold wallets and lied about it. And then within uh, two and a half years, I think they reimbursed people somewhere in that neighborhood. So it is what it is. But that's centralized. That's not decentralized. Like I said, you might as well just be a bank at that point and the crypto is just a convenience. The blockchain doesn't mean anything because one company is the gatekeeper to everything. They retain the funds, they retain the wallet, and then they retain you know, the responsibility and the liability for the wallets being safe. And everything you do on your end is you just telling them what to do, but they, they could just kick you out, delete your account. But if the wallet and the transactions, everything are on your phone, your device, and you don't back it up, boom, it fails, you lose all your funds. So it's like, the, it's either decentralized or it's not. That's why crypto has no practical use in daily life either. The best I've heard proposed like a couple of years ago on a forum is use it like a, like a reloadable prepaid visa or like any other credit or debit card. Or like cash, I filled up my wallet, my physical wallet, with 120 bucks worth of paper currency. Cool. When it runs out, I'll go to the bank and get more. But as soon as I take it out of the bank and walk out the door, now it's my problem. Now it's my property. But I'm, I'm limited to, you know, I'm not going to walk around with 10 grand. So if you just go to a bank or go to a third party and keep refilling your wallet and then spend it, then refill your wallet, then spend it. But then all the transactions under your control is decentralized. Okay, except that like 99% of your wealth at any given time is caught up in the third party and it's just banks. And if you say, I want to take out 50K out of my account and they just say no because they're holding your account and it's not your property, well, then you got a problem. Once again, very limited decentralized, but it would be like this big convenience high security thing and it would be better than the credit card network. So 
okay, there's your daily use case. It would still be a pain. And my God, would people get pissed when they're like, I lost my phone and there was $70 on it. What are you going to do about it? They'll be like, well, the, the money was physically on a wallet on your phone. And we didn't back it up to the cloud for security reasons because duh. Or you forgot your password when you're locked out? We don't have it either. Why would we? Decentralized blockchain. Welcome to the future. I mean, do you think some dumb 50-year-old Karen calling customer support would be like, oh, that's fine. Okay, huh? I'm an idiot. I'm going to take personal responsibility. No. So the same thing goes for NFTs because they, they, they're they just different blockchain transactions with similar fees and they all run on the same crypto as the blockchain pretty much. I think some of the fees can run on the token itself, but not with NFTs, only with tokenized uh, currencies that run on top of it. This is getting a little technical anyway, but let me let me just wrap it up by saying nothing about NFTs would work in the magic world or in any game. I don't see a way around it either. So if you have some some new news or some new idea or something you heard about, leave it down in the comment section. I'd love to hear it. Otherwise, uh, that's the final report on NFTs and magic. Should they do it? Absolutely not. Would it work? No, never. Would it sound good and would it fool people into thinking it's great because, ooh, retained ownership and trading, ooh. Yes, until everybody started to use it and found out it didn't work at all. And there's like the, the final kill switch belongs to wizards or it's out of their control. And it's a nightmare. It, the, neither one is, is a proper scenario. And at the end of the day, that kills it. So almost any use of an NFT is stupid, except for like my granite tablet thing, like I said, where just the ownership deed is recognized. And when I do a bill of sale, it's on there. You signed it. I signed it. There it is. Which basically the deed to the property isn't on the blockchain it's that piece of paper saying I sold it to you. Because without an invoice or a receipt, a court's going to be like, what do you mean blockchain? That doesn't mean anything. Did you sell it to him? Do you have proof? Because the transfer of an NFT on the blockchain from one owner to another owner, from one wallet to another, they don't know if it's fraudulent or they don't know if it was stolen, coerced. If your stuff was hacked, they have no idea. They're going to come down to, well, do you have a receipt? And then you can't prove you own it. So even ownership of a stupid custom carved meme into a granite tablet with a laser engraved serial number on it, still NFTs are a little bit imperfect and not recognized by any government or any system anywhere. To me, it's just a convenient way of taking stupid stuff that you don't care about, which is why it's just another dumb technology that... We'll probably still be around in five years, but it's not going to get any wider use than it is now because people are super over it. And the sooner you learn about them, the better, which you just watched this whole video. So, ta-da. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.